Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name is Tom Short, so glad to have you along today. As I'd like to talk today about a friend of mine who passed away earlier this month, Jed Smock, or many people know him as Brother Jed. That's right, I've talked some about how my good friend and someone I looked up to, Herschel Martindale, passed away just over three weeks ago. And just a couple days after that, four days after that, Jed Smock, uh, someone also that I developed a friendship with, passed away. It was kind of hard on me, to be honest, two men in my life that had been in my life my entire adult Christian life and had been, to one degree or another, real comrades, real partners. Now, uh, passing away within a few days of one another, it was a difficult time. I talk about Brother Jed in my book, Taking to Their Turf. There you go, Taking to Their Turf. And I'd like to tell a little bit of the story about him. Some of you may know Brother Jed as because I'll tell you, Hundreds of thousands of college students encountered him and never forgot him. Jed would be a campus preacher, and he would speak pretty strongly. He had a fire and brimstone message. He warned the students of impending judgment. He spoke straightforwardly about the common sins on campus, sexual morality, homosexuality, drunkenness, drugs, rock and roll, and he spoke in sometimes fairly raw language that made some people laugh and made a lot of people angry. Jed knew how to stir up a crowd and make a, make a stir on campus. My guess is if you encountered him, you'd never forget him. I still, through the years, I've had so many people ask me about that other guy out there. Years later, they remember having encountered Brother Jed when they were on campus. Jed passed away earlier in June. He had begun to develop, it was diagnosed with stage four liver failure back in December. Kept on the campus, even through pain, tremendous fatigue, um, and he preached his last time May 17th before passing away June 6th. When I first encountered Brother Jed myself, it was at Ohio State University, probably in 1976. To be honest, I couldn't believe what I saw. The strong accusation the uh, against drinking and sex and all, it, it was kind of shocking. I wasn't used to something like that. And the reaction of the students, the anger, the shouting back. One of the first times I ever heard him, he called upon his partner, Max Lynch, to come up and speak. And while Max was standing up, I jumped into the center of a huge crowd. And kind of gave the speech of, let me tell you what my God's like, because I don't what these guys are saying isn't the God I follow. And disagreed with him. Well, Max didn't like me doing that. I don't think Jed did either. It was my first time ever really preaching on a campus. And I disagreed with them. Through time, I, I was so angry at Jed. He would say things I thought misrepresented the Lord. But through time... I began to realize we really are on the same side. We're really talking about the Lord, and I'm trying to figure out what can I learn from him. One thing I learned is that I should reprove him in private. And the Bible does say this. Don't sharply rebuke an older man, but rebuke him, you know, re gently appeal to him. And I decided one day to stick around to the very end. And when he was done, I asked if I could talk with him. I walked with him from, off, from the Oval out to the parking garage, about a seven or eight minute walk. The entire time I told him how he could do things better, how he was wrong, how the, this was misunderstood, how this was turning students off, etc. cetera. And uh, we, I still can see it today. He got to his car, opened the door, put his briefcase in the car, turned and looked me in the eye, having not said a single word the whole walk looked me in the eye, and he said, do you preach on campus? Well, I thought back to that time I had when, between him and Brother Max, and I said, well, not much, a little bit. He said, well, let me just say I like the way I do it better than the way you don't. Turned, got in his car, pulled out, drove down, and I remember looking in the car, drive down the ramp saying, God, Father, I pray someday he wouldn't be able to say that to me. Well, that day happened. 
because as I've been gotten out on the campus and and in some part motivated by Brother Jed and by his example, some, something he brought out something that was in me, the idea of publicly proclaiming. I wanted to do that, and here was an example of someone doing it. You no, know, I didn't agree with every way he did it. I began to learn and say, even though I disagree, what can I learn from him? And I learned some important lessons. I learned to be loud. I learned to move around. I learned to be active. I learned to engage the students instead of lecturing them to, in, to interact with them. I learned to be unashamed in speaking forth the gospel that, that I'm, I'm, I learned boldness. Through the years, Jed and I actually became quite good friends. He came to have a deep respect for me and my ministry. He had a preacher's conference, and he would always invite me to come speak to the guys who were basically, he was mentoring. And he would ask me to come and take a session and, and share with them the things I had shared with him that day walking to the car. Jed didn't embrace all of what I said, not by a long shot. He maintained a lot of it, and he maintained a lot of his practices that, I didn't really, I didn't agree with, although I came to understand why he does what he does and, and begin to see, well, there's, okay, I can see why. I didn't follow all of his practices by any means, but we developed a deep, deep friendship. In fact, over the years, I would say I considered Jed to be a true friend. We often would compare schedules to make sure we weren't on campus at the same time. And actually, I find myself, if I followed him, I'd get, a, I'd get a pretty good response. He would have stirred him up a week or two earlier before I was on campus. And when I showed up, people would be ripe and ready to, re, to they, he would have brought about some repentance. He would have plowed the ground and sown some seed and prepared me to go in and reap after him. I learned in that friendship, I learned some important things from Brother Jed. I learned boldness. The man, I learned conviction. I learned to be unashamed of what you believe. That's often what people are looking for these days. People aren't looking, so many, so many Christian leaders are wishy-washy, afraid of offending. Now, Brother Jed had no problem with that, and maybe he went a little bit too far on the I don't care to offend side of things. I don't know. But believe me, Christian leaders, people, we need to we need to have some backbone and stand for things. And and Jed in, helped inspire this in me, that unashamed boldness to stand on the college campus, to face down anyone who had any argument with the conviction. We have the truth, have nothing to worry about. I learned perseverance. There are many many times over the years that I've got other responsibilities. I've got pastoring a church and on the board of a, an association of churches. I'd have meetings I had to attend. I'd have things I had to do. And uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a nice day outside, and I would look out at the sunny day, and, and if it was a school day, I would think, you know, I'm here doing this other stuff. Somewhere, somewhere in America, Jed's on a campus today. And I didn't think of that to compete with him, but to be inspired by him. And indeed, since 1972, there have probably been very, very few school days. Rain, shine, snow. Unless preachers are smart enough to know you preach in the northern states during the fall and the spring, and you preach in the southern states during the winter time. We're smart enough to do that, but we run into inclement weather still. Very few days that he wouldn't be out there. Very few days that he wouldn't be at his post. I knew that. And it inspired me. And indeed, as I've uh, shared here, Brother Jed, through this last semester, through pain and fatigue as his developing complications from his liver failure, would be out on campus. He couldn't speak as long. Sometimes his speech was a bit slurred, as I've seen on some of the videos. But he remained at his post until the last day of school this semester. And then uh, just... About three weeks after that, he evidently was dizzy, <clears throat> had a fall, broke broke five ribs, punctured a lung, and passed just days after that. One thing about um, Brother Jed and Herschel, 
and I, again, I, my good friend Herschel Martindale, as I was did his memorial service on Saturday, and we talked about it about him much. Both men finished their course, but they did it in different ways. Brother Jed was on campus until just three weeks before he passed, pre, out on the campus preaching. Herschel Martindale had a different way he finished his course. Later in life, he and his wife developed uh, de- developed uh, some health issues. His wife, Mardine, began to develop dementia. And these last two, three years, Herschel was, had to be home to take care of her. And it took courage and faith and humility to prefer, I'd rather be out there, I'd rather be teaching, I'd rather... But no, God has called me to love, honor, and cherish, nourish, and protect my wife. And that's what he did. And and through those last years, he finished his course at his wife's side, caring for her, reading scripture, enjoying her in these final couple of years. Both men finished their course in different ways, but they did the will of God to the very end. What a... What an example, what an honor might you and I be people who finish our course. My son pointed out to me, we were talking about why losing Jed was, um, why it meant so much to me. And he said, Dad, you two were in the same profession. Most people don't know what it's like to stand out on a college campus Surrounded by a crowd of people, some loving what you say, some hating on you, some arguing you, trying trying to twist your words, trying to find fault, trying to make you look bad, hurling insults at you, and yet staying faithful, loving them back, doing your best, trying to have a good answer, knowing that sometimes you don't do the best job or or you don't represent the Lord as best you wish you would have, but you're out in the fire. You're in the arena. You're doing it. You're, you're, it. you're in the battle. And sometimes, even though there were, you know, many times that people would say, when you were on this campus, you know, last month you called me this or that. And I said, I wasn't even here a month ago. And I knew what they were referring to. Even though, and saying, maybe saying, Jed would say things I wouldn't say. But we were both in the arena together. We were both on the battlefield together. And so when I heard of his loss, it, it did touch me deeply. And, um, and it hurt to think of a colleague that's been on the campus day in and day out for 50 years and has now moved on. So I'll be going to Terre Haute, Indiana today to uh, take part and be, to pay my tribute to him. I won't be speaking at the service, but I'll be there to pay my respects. And I pray for, as Mardine, we pray for Mardine and her, uh, Mardine her, Martindale, and, and as she continues on, be well taken care of. She's in her 90s. Sister Cindy, Brother Jed's wife, 63 years old, and she'll continue on the ministry. They're in different stages of life, but both these women have lost their husbands. It's both painful, hard, difficult. We pray for the families that remain, and we learn and honor those godly men who went before us. Father in heaven, I do come to you today, and we thank you for heroic men who finished their course. We thank you for those people that, Lord, even if there were some disagreements and certain things of belief or even certain practices, yet they were faithful to the call you gave them in life as best they knew how. And for this, we are grateful for these examples. I pray for each of us, Lord, that the course you've called us to walk on, the fight you've called us to fight, the race you've called us to run, I pray for me and each on this daily word and prayer, we would be faithful till our dying breath to our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is so worthy of our love and devotion. We thank you, Lord, for those who've gone before us and things we can learn from them. We pray, Lord, that we would be inspired by those who are faithful in their call. I pray, Lord, today for 
the families left behind. I pray for Mardine and the Martindale family. I pray for Cindy and the Smock family. Lord, we've had a loss, but their loss is so much more. I pray they know your comfort, your, str- their sh- your strength, your mercy, and your kindness. We thank you, Father, that you know how to minister to people when they're on the mountaintop, and you know how to minister to people when they're in the valley. We give you praise today, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, folks, God bless you. So glad you're with me today. I'm here every day. I hope I'll be here tomorrow. I'm maybe traveling back. We don't know my exact schedule. Uh, But we're here every day, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, or you can watch later. You can even watch uh, earlier because I leave all my YouTubes up. Or you can listen on the Apple, Spotify, or Google platforms if you just want the audio. I believe we need to be inspired and encouraged every day. That's what you need. I need it. You need it too. If you're not getting fed, fed by the Word of God every day, inspired by the Word of God every day, learning every day, and re calibrating your life every day you need that get into the word of god and if you need some help join us not just when you feel like it or not just when i pop up on your youtube feed but every day make a commitment join us it'll make a difference in your life i know it will make sure you subscribe hit the notify button tell your friends about this time and i hope that i hope you'll join us and be part of our community okay so until we meet tomorrow my god bless you strengthen you, fill you with his peace, his joy, his love, and his perseverance. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.